Hi, welcome to Wine on the Page. I am Scott. This is the weekly reading wrap-up that's not actually weekly because I've actually haven't done one in like two or so weeks. So this is going to be catching up with uh, what I read in March and also some of what I read in the first week of April, ending uh, with April 6th. So let's get started. I've been a little bit behind on videos, not just with the weekly reading wrap-ups, but some of my other videos. And I actually kind of found myself in a bit of a reading slump. Which, when you see what I have to talk about, is going to seem strange to you. But it is a reading slump and not a reading slump. I have a lot of books, like like a dozen or so books over here, including the Doonesbury book, The Underground Railroad, Finnegan's Wake, uh, Rusty Brown, The Watchmen, a couple of P.G. Woodhouse books, some more, that I basically have not read in a couple of weeks. Now, usually that would mean that I would come here and go like, uh, my, my update is, I don't have an update. But for whatever reason, I just felt I couldn't read these. Not that I wanted to DNF them or anything. I just kind of, sometimes I just go through phases of something. Like I will watch something like again and again and again, and then I will just not touch it for months at a time and it doesn't necessarily always happen to me with reading it, it does sometimes like 2021 i read i believe 12 books all year in the first half of the year i'd only read like two uh and then the next year i read about 200 books so i i go through phases let's say uh but i didn't read any of those books and I've also I, I DNF the, the the Bible uh, hope that doesn't upset anybody I have read the Bible several times before but I, I looked at because I have it on an app and I looked at it the other day and I was like it's on day like 105 or something and the last time I read it was like on day 86 so I'm just like if I go through this, I'm just going to like flick, flick, flick. It's not really reading it. So I'm just, I'm DNFing it. So that is the second book I DNF this year. I also uh, DNF another book, which I can't recall what it's called, but I, I believe it's by Olivia Lucas. It was a, a romance that it was just ridiculous. I got like 95 pages in. It's about a 300 page book. It's just like, I can't do this anymore. So I have DNF'd three total books this year. But let's talk about the books that I did finish reading, that I pretty much started and finished reading pretty rapidly. Uh, let's go with the one audiobook that I completed in this time frame. And that is... The Lord of the Rings, The Fellowship of the Ring, read by Andy Serkis, who, as many people know, played Gollum Smeagol in uh, the Lord of the Ring trilogy. I like this quite a bit. It's a little bit different listening to it as opposed to reading it because I found out one thing. Oh, reading the songs are okay because when I read them, Quite honestly, I tend to skip over them. But when you're listening to them, it's like, oh, got to listen to this. And some of these songs go on for quite a while. Uh, and also, Tom Bombadil is, to me, quite a useless character. I understand that Tolkien had his own reasons for, like, basically the mythology of the Lord of the Rings, of his Tolkienverse, Middle-earth, 
Uh, but Tom Bombadil is like a wasted character to me. I understand why he's not in the movies. This is going to be the case, and I'm not going to get too much into the book because everybody knows the book. I've read it several times before uh, in physical form. I just have not listened to it before. This is going to be a case where the whole is more than some of the parts. There are some parts of this book that annoy me, the songs in Tom Bombadil. Yet it still has Sam Gamgee, one of the best characters in literature. I believe I will fight you. Uh, Sam Gamgee is probably the character who has started my love of the sidekick character. The sidekick, you know, Sam Gamgee, uh, Piglet, if you don't know. John Watson, Dr. John Watson. I always tend to like the, the sidekick character better than the main character. And I think a lot of it starts with Sam Gamgee. Although I will refute that Sam Gamgee is a sidekick character. I think he is the overall main character of the entire Lord of the Rings. I understand some people disagree. They will say Frodo is. And obviously there's a lot that can be said for that i just i don't agree but i i'm giving that a five star again there are things that irritate me about it but the whole is better than some of the parts so that's one audiobook i read now what else have i done i've read a lot a lot a lot a lot hey wash but uh, I've been making great use of my Kindle Unlimited. What I forget what it's cost, but it's like 13 bucks a month. And I have definitely, please move away from the ring. Thank you. I have made good use of it. So other than The Lord of the Rings, which maybe you could say has some... Uh, homosexual undertones, especially if you all listen to my daughter. Uh, I don't necessarily subscribe to it, but uh, you could see that. But everything else that I read has been a sapphic romance. Uh, and I have explained this before. People watching this may ask, because there are a lot of them, why sapphic romances? Well, why romances? One, because before last year, I generally didn't read romances a lot. And I, I did a whole video about reading romances. And romances are pretty much super easy reads. And sometimes you just want that. And like, I could get that with like Agatha Christie books or, uh, or other books like that. But it's just... Like, there aren't any mysteries that I haven't read that are really calling out to me to be read. I don't find any, like, these... I, I don't want to say non-thinking books, but please get away from that, man. Uh, but there are books that you can read that you don't have to put a lot of thought into. They're sometimes the equivalent of background TV. It's not a ring endorsement, but I will say that I enjoyed a lot of them. We go, okay, why sapphic? Uh, I have read heterosexual romances before. And more often than not, I find that the male character tends to annoy me greatly. Some of my books last year on, like, when I did my hope most hated or worse books of the year, a lot of them were heterosexual romances, mainly because of the male main character. Why don't I read gay romances? That uh, They don't really interest me. Uh, I, I got to be quite honest, and I don't want to get into other people's business, but uh, people in my life, uh, I tend to know more lesbians than gay people or more people along the sexuality spectrum who are women who might love women I guess and so some of the characters in here uh, 
I can relate to as in the way that these are like people I know. So let's get into those. Uh, the first one I have was The Goodmans, written by Claire Ashton. The Goodman, The Goodmans is, and I, I have a little cheat sheet because, as I've explained before, terrible at names horrible at names especially when i've read a lot of books i know what happens in the books but it's like okay the one doctor character is in love the one doctor character being uh abby she is in love with her best friend jude who's also a doctor uh they both live in a village they met in college and they became best friends and abby is not only in love with jude but She's also in love with Jude's family because after her mother died, they took care of her. And Jude is straight. She has been in a relationship with a guy for five years. Uh, so Abby has hidden her feelings. So what happens is Jude's brother comes back one day with a fiance and Jude's boyfriend decides that this is a perfect time to propose, which Jude isn't really into, and it also breaks Abby's heart. So the the boyfriend is pretty early kind of moved out of the the spotlight. Now we also have Maggie. Good. Stop trying to walk under the ring. <laughs> we also have Maggie Goodman, who is uh, the matriarch of the family, who is kind of a burden to her children but abby loves her but also maggie isn't really down with abby being a lesbian not because she's necessarily homophobic but because of the things that lgbtq people face in life she thinks she thinks that they would have an easier life if they were with people of the opposite sex. But there's a lot of uh, debate back and forth about that. And of course, there's depths to these characters. There's layers. So we find out more about this. And it starts out really with Abby and Jude. And uh, Jude finds out that Abby is in love with her. And that makes Abby think. But the interesting thing about this is that if there's a main character of the book, and I wouldn't necessarily say that there is, but if there was one person I would have to say is the main character, it's Maggie. Because it moves from Abby and Jude to really Maggie. We, we get almost two books. We get all that stuff with Abby and Jude up to a point, and And then... After that point, there's still a focus of the book, but the, but the focus is more on Maggie. It's just, there are so many deaths to this. Like, I, I didn't want to insult books when I talk about it, like, kind of as background TV, but this is just a very well written book. Uh, found family, uh, people facing their past people facing their future, uh, I am going to give this one a five star. So that's two five stars this week. I I think there's another one, but I, I won't say 100% for sure. Then I have A Holly Jolly Christmas by Emily Wright. I know it's a Christmas book and I read it in March, but I was like, okay, sure. Uh, again, all the books I'm talking about from here on out are sapphic romance. Holly comes back to home a couple years after her brother has died. She hasn't felt like she could face being home. But she finally comes back. Uh, her, verse, her first love, Vicky, lives next door. And it's basically, it's, I guess, a second chance kind of romance. But it just doesn't land. Uh, it was pleasant enough as it went along, but as you can see, I have notes here. Uh, 
when I went back and I read this a little bit after mid March, I was like, "Holly Jolly Christmas." Do not remember what it was about. Now, once I I read the description, I was like, "Oh yeah," but it just doesn't really stick. So, uh, it occupied some time. Two and a half stars. Uh, Say Cheese was written by T.B. Markinson and Miranda McLeod. Uh, Ellie is saved in a flood by Angelina. And they are majorly flirty. And Angelina takes Ellie back to her cabin. And uh, things happen. And then after things happen, they find out, oh, Angelina's family uh, runs the cheese making business and Ellie is the business consultant who is sent there to try to improve things for them which Angelina thinks means selling the business or making drastic changes to it and so they're at odds there uh it's also a bit of an age gap one I don't remember how big the age gap is I know Ellie's in her, I think, mid 20s and Angelina's early 30, maybe. So, not the biggest age gap that we're going to see. It, it was a fun read. It was entertaining. I liked almost all the characters. Uh, I liked the chemistry between the two main characters. Uh, the Say Cheese is obviously wordplay for the cheese making business and also Ellie is an amateur photographer. I don't know if that will play a part in this novel at all. Um, so yeah, four stars for that one. Uh, the next two novels are by Adrian J. Smith. They are two books in the same area, some of the same characters. I just happened to read them in the incorrect order, I guess, although you don't necessarily need to read them in the same order. But I read Love Me at My Worst first. Uh, Isla Walsh is a teacher. She has trouble recovering uh, from her father died years ago and her stepmother raised her. her. Her mother had died previously. And her stepmother was pretty cold to her after. Not mean, but cold. And she has like anxiety because of this. And then it turns out that her stepmother is dating Isla's best friend. How'd that happen? Wait one book. We'll find out. Um, but she's a teacher. She has this sunny disposition that she shows everybody. And she often plays trick on the uh, principal who is... Uh, and this, this name annoys me because I just think it should be something else when I see it written. It's Andre Murphy, A-N-D-R-Y. It just messes with me. Uh, she's fresh off a divorce from uh, a fellow principal who also happens to be an alcoholic, apparently quite a uh, prolific alcoholic. So I'm like, how is this person a principal still? But, uh, and so, of course... There's uh, conflicts there, a uh, person in a position of power over another person. And, and those are always dicey for me, I'll be quite honest. I I think this one handles it decently. Uh, not necessarily one that I'm fully comfortable with, but if you'd like to see one that I'm much less comfortable with, give me one book. <laughs> Uh, but this one was fine. I think a lot of Adrian J. Smith, because I've read, I believe, at least two more books of hers. They tend to be a little drier than other sapphic romances and have some, you know, I like it when the books have some depth to them, but then there's sometimes there's just like, drama for drama's sake and i don't think there's like like a lot of the jokes in here a lot of the pranks not that amusing to be fair they're also fairly harmless they're all they're kind of mostly nice pranks so uh but it just didn't hit 
too much for me. It was, it was a fine book. I give it a three. Uh, then we also have from Agent J. Smith, When the Past Finds You, uh, Will is Isla's best friend. They've been friends for pretty much all their life. Uh, Isla also has quite a temper, and she has always hated Isla's stepmother. For some reason, I want to think Vivian, but I think that's just because there's another book who uh, as a character named Vivian. But the stepmother, uh, as I said, was very cold, and now she's uh, basically hired to come in to work at Will's company because the stepmother's company has bought it out. You know, they go through the whole the restructuring thing, and so the two of them have to work together. And uh, feelings. Now, this one, this is one of the novels where I'm like, oh, okay, the whole position of power over another person, this was done poorly because the stepmother does abuse her position. There, there are often books in this type of situation where it's like, okay, you're, you're pushing the boundaries a bit, but I can go, all right, I guess. This one I did not like at all. I also, I don't like the stepmother at all. There are ice queens that I can appreciate. Chess did not like her. I wasn't overly fond of Will either. Uh, again, also, I read the other book first. If I had read them in the correct order, maybe I would have liked these characters more, but I got this all through Isla's point of view first, and I'm kind of like, you people are dicks. So I uh, gave it two and a half stars. I don't think it deserves two stars, but I don't know that it necessarily deserves two and a half, but I'm going to give it two and a half. Uh, when You Least Expect It is by Haley Cass. It's about a uh, divorce lawyer, Caroline, Caroline Parker, who uh, takes on a divorce for Hannah Dalton, who is the estranged wife of an ex-colleague of Caroline's. Caroline did not like this colleague, and he always hated her. Uh, Caroline is an out lesbian. Uh, so she helps Hannah. Hannah also has a child. Don't remember the child's name, but the child was uh, for a, a book child. Pretty good child. I just don't remember their name. Uh, Caroline pretty much quickly falls in love with Hannah. Hannah has never been in a relationship with a woman. So this is a very slow burn book. It's also entirely from Caroline's point of view. I think the book would have been a little bit better if you had both points of views, which you often have in romances. But in this one, it was just Caroline's. There is a novella, Better Than Expected, which I also read, that gives it from Hannah's point of view, but I honestly think it would have better if these two books had just kind of been pushed together and gone back and forth that way, but it was still a good book. I generally like Haley Cass books, four stars. Oh, when, oh, sorry, that, another Haley Cass book. This is a novella. Uh, down to a science. This is about oh, Ellie, Ellie, Ellie Beckett, who is the twin sister of Riley, who was in on the same page, which I would say is my favorite Hilly Cast book. Uh, Ellie is socially awkward. I would say maybe on the spectrum. I don't want to say because. It, I don't believe it really says it in the books at all, or if it does, I don't remember. Uh, she uh, sees Mia, a firefighter, at a bar where she often goes, usually to take science notes and study them and such, and she basically falls in love with Mia. But Mia seems oblivious to it, although she really wants Ellie's friendship and it's uh 
like I said, it's a novella. I think it's less than 200 pages. It, it's, it's fine. I, I don't think that these two characters are necessarily the most interesting. But again, this is from the same universe that on the same pages. And I think on the same pages, I think on the same page is an extremely great book. I believe I gave it four and a half stars. This one, uh, and also the whole revelation about Mia. Eh. I, I, no, I don't, I don't think it worked. I'm not saying it's awful. I just don't think it worked. Uh, I, I will give this three and a half. Uh, for Your Consideration by Amy Spaulding. Nino works for a company that manages celebrity emails. Uh, one of those celebrities is Ari Fox. They meet because apparently Ari or Ari is a trouble client, according to her boss, but not that we ever see. And she apparently is quite attracted to Nina. Nina has pretty much sworn off relationships, kind of taken herself away from her friends because she had a bad breakup. Uh, the first half of this book, I got to say, very much enjoyed. They're, they're flirting, they're getting together, and then Nina just is too much. I, it got to the point where I'm like, yeah, I could see why your ex girlfriend broke up with you. I just became an unlikable character. And not like an unlikable character who turns herself around. It's like, no, I think you're pretty much the same person and you're no fun. Two and a half stars. Uh, Snowed in with Summer by Tiana Warner. Avery goes on to the trip to Yukon. Uh, she was supposed to go with her boyfriend. He broke up right before that. She gets there and she finds out that her ex-girlfriend, Summer, is there. And because of living arrangements, they're the two solo people, so they are put in the same yurt. Uh, it was fine. It wasn't bad. I think it qualifies as generally forgettable, but pleasant enough while I was reading it. it it's another one, not as badly as uh, for your consideration. Starts out really well, and then it just kind of dwindles away. But I will give it a three star. I'm trying to remember who wrote this. Let's see. Mis Mistakes were made by Meryl Wilsner. Uh, it's an age gap book. <laughs> uh, Cassie, a college senior, goes to a bar and basically has a quick hookup with an older woman there, Erin, who she finds out the next day is the mother of one of her friends. Uh, they try to just avoid each other, but they keep connecting and connecting and connecting. Uh, I got to be honest, when I first, I, I've seen this several times in Kindle Unlimited, I'm kind of like, I don't think this is my thing because it, it seems a little too, uh, I guess, cynical to me just based on reading the description. But honestly, although not all of it is believable, it's actually pretty sweet. Uh, I mean, if you have a problem with the age gap, and this one is like, uh, I think Cassie is 22, and I think Aaron is late 30s, maybe early 40s. Not quite over half her age, but close to close to twice Cassie's age, but I'm going to give it a four star. Actually, pretty nice read if you can get past the age gap. Uh, Taming of a Rebel by Ida Friesian. Going to mispronounce that. Uh, Tori, a divorced mother sharing custody with her ex-wife, is determined to find her soulmate before she's 30, but she just keeps running into uh, Miranda, who... Uh, is 
a funeral director. She's over 40, ice queen, but she's also watching Rebel, who is her sister's kid, but her sister basically has run off to Mexico trying to find her soulmate and has just left her kid with Miranda. The, the grandparents are there, but they, they are not going to watch a kid. They didn't watch their kids when they were growing up. Miranda did it. I really hate the family dynamic there. You'll find that a lot in some of these books is I'm always like, if you have shitty family members, you can dump them. I'm not talking about Rebel. You don't dump a three-year-old kid. Uh, but her sister and her parents totally can dump them. Uh, I, I like the flirtation in... The, the ice the thawing of the ice queen here but uh yeah i'm gonna give it three and a half stars fairly enjoyable now we have a couple of wrestling related uh, books first one sucker punch by kayla favor uh pam is a professional wrestler who runs a wrestling club in london with her cousin it's what, what it's called the beat cave uh she meets aj cass who's an influencer and journalist from LA who's there writing an article about uh, the Beat Cave, and they are attracted to each other pretty much right away, but it takes them forever to just say, hey, you, me. Uh, Pam thinks she's ugly. And she talks about, which well, she doesn't talk about, but she thinks about it all the time. It gets annoying. Pam is a fine character, but this one trait is just annoying. Uh, it, it's fine. I I generally like it, but super slow burn, and it's kind of like, yeah, you both know you like each other. Kiss already, but they take their time. Uh, but I, it was generally enjoyable. I'm gonna give it a four star, and then also by Kayla Faber. And if if you don't see the name, uh, K, Fabe wrestling term uh but it's called a uh, sucker punch pretty devils same wrestling club the beat cave except this time around there's a uh, live who is trying to join the beat cave they they have a thing where every year they have like three people uh come in and basically wrestle and try to get crowd reaction so that one of them at the end of their little season, whatever is given a contract basically. So, uh, slight spoilers there are two other people. There's, uh, I forget her name, but they call her blue and there's uh Riza. And these two are super tall, athletic people in live is the, the short, short girl. They just tower over her. Uh, she's spunky, and I say that with all sincerity and all love. Uh, she's she's spunky. Uh, she and, and Riza basically quickly go from uh, basically live just trying to push Riza, get her to crack a little bit, get her to smile or laugh. Riza being like super grumpy to basically they're, they're friends pretty quickly. I don't know if this is the case, but as somebody who has watched wrestling, when I look at Liv and Riza, I'm reminded, and I, I will try to post a picture here, uh, of Liv Morgan and Rhea Ripley when they were a tag team in the WWE. Uh, not saying anything at all about uh, Rhea Ripley and Liv Morgan as far as like one-to-one -one corresponding here but they did kind of have sapphic undertones to their team not to themselves just to their their character team and they pushed that here but uh live in riza also developed close except live is straight uh live is also we are never told this and Liv would not be able to find out because Liv is poor. She was living with an alcoholic mother, but her alcoholic mother got her fired, then kicked her out of the house. So Liv is also homeless. 
uh, well doing the wrestling thing. There's no way for Liv to find us out, but Liv really does appear to be somewhere on the spectrum. And we're never told this, but we're shown so many signs. And honestly, the relationship between uh, Liv and Ryza, and, and it's hard because Liv and Ryza also have character names. Uh, Liv is Ivy Morgan in in Liv and Ivy Morgan. I'm pretty sure Liv Morgan was the catalyst for this. Uh, and Ryza is oh, I can't remember her character name. Ryza is is gay. Lib straight? Pretty sure she's straight. I just love Lib. I am going to give this another the the whole is better than some of the parts. I'm gonna give this one a five star. I really loved reading it. I've gone back to read sections of it after. And then I follow that up with Switch the Switcheroo by Cheyenne Blue. Uh Haley Reed is a New Yorker who enters a competition to basically switch jobs with somebody and she thinks she's gonna switch with somebody in the states she ends up switching with somebody in australia and works on a like remote cattle farm and she's taken under the wing of jenna dwyer and they slowly start to like each other i guess i mean they develop a sexual relationship i gotta be quite honest and maybe this is just how things go when you're on a remote cattle uh, farm. I, 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 I didn't really buy too much into there being more than a friends with benefits type of thing. I just didn't see that type of chemistry with them. So, and also just weird every once in a while, just this author just has to talk shit about millennials i'm like what's the purpose of this I i'm gonna give it a three star it was mildly amusing uh the fiance farce by alexandra bellaflor uh also wrote written in the stars which i liked except that book has a lot of the problems that this one also has and that families suck 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 horrible horrible families uh that when I should say the reading, take out the family, bump that up half star, maybe a whole star. Uh, but Tansy is a bookstore manager. She makes up a fake girlfriend basically to get her family off her back. And she looks at one of the books she has and the cover model is Gemma. So she says her girlfriend's name is Gemma. But Gemma is also the cousin of somebody at the wedding tansy is that she comes in there people are basically going like this is Gemma. you're saying this is Gemma," and then Gemma says oh we're engaged because apparently Gemma has to be married to uh inherit the business from her grandfather it's in his will and so they agree to get married and it, it's generally enjoyable. I like I like the two main characters. Obviously, the way it starts off is like, well, this is a little hokey, but okay. Uh, but the family, uh, uh, three point five could have been a four, could have been a four point five, just unenjoyable. Uh, a lesbian's G guide to women by Erica Lee. Uh, <laughs> this one is funny. <laughs> Uh, Annalise is pushed to get on a woman-only hookup site by her grandmother. So they were going to start there. Uh, she has never been with a woman before. Says she's straight. Uh, but she does it anyways because apparently if your grandma says do it, you do it. Uh, and she has a disastrous first meeting with a woman at a bar, which is seen by Brinley, the bartender there. And basically, Brinley agrees to teach Annalise how to hook up. And it, it <laughs> is very sex-based. You know, there's a syllabus that is about hooking up, and you see it in the first couple of pages. So uh, this is available for free under Kindle Unlimited. So if you want to see it, uh, 
but it again, it's another one that's like I was expecting something else, and this also pretty sweet and again funny. Uh, I I I enjoyed it. Uh, I there is a follow up to it, but I've read some reviews about it, and the reviews tend to be praiseworthy. But it it says something that happened, and I was like, I don't want to read that. But this one, I'm gonna give four and a half stars. Uh, then we have a trilogy, the Bayview Romances. Uh, it starts with, if it's meant to be, all these are written by Lily Seabrook. Uh, the first book, uh, Amber Lynn is a freelance music producer. Her best friend is Paisley. Paisley's sister, Aria, is visiting. She's kind of burnt out from her job, and she's also broken up. Amberlynn is immediately infatuated with Arya and does the whole fumbling, uh, totally can't think, is caught looking at the other person. Uh, it This can be overbearing for a character, but Amberlynn is generally pretty good despite all the awkward cringe stuff that happens in the first part of the book uh aria is receptive to it although she says i can't get involved because i'm leaving i don't want to be in a relationship and uh i i think the first part of the book is better than the last part of the book it, they got to do that thing oh we have to break up why let's put this reason and then let's have this happen and some of the stuff that happens at the end of the book i'm kind of like eh. We are also introduced to other characters that will be in the other two books. And Emberlyn and Aria will be in the other two books also, but as secondary characters. Uh, this one I give a three and a half. The second one is Against the Current. Uh, Annabelle is a swim, a swim coach uh, who has to put off the crush of one of her swimmers, Priscilla. Except she doesn't do a very good job of it. This is another one where it's like, oh... Somebody with authority over another person. It's just like, no. I mean, I understand Annabelle's 26, Priscilla's 22, but still, she's a coach. I, I think especially with things we have seen in the news in the last decade or so, when you talk about a coach with a student athlete, meh. Probably not the way you want to go. My my least favorite of the three books. Annabelle is just not an enjoyable character, I don't think. I, and you, she's a person who is non-monogamous, pretty much. And she's trying to not do the casual relationship thing. And the reason I don't really like her much has nothing to do with her non-monogamy. I just don't think she has as much depth as other characters. And she's not, not particularly interesting. I do like Priscilla. Priscilla, I like in this book, I like even better in the next book, which she's not a main character, but she's a very integral part of it as what it has to do with another character. This one I give two and a half. Not a very good book. It's just mainly because of Annabelle. And then uh, every little thing, Harper, the baker, she was previously in a relationship with Annabelle in the first book, but they had broken up basically before the start of the first book. She is leaving town, and she hasn't told anybody. Uh, Paisley, who is Arya's sister, finds out because Paisley's the type of person who will go in somebody's house and get into their email or eat their food. She's, I guess, quirky. Um, another one on the spectrum. I don't want, want to keep saying that, but she's not your average girl, I guess. Apparently, Harper and Paisley have had encounters in the past. Paisley, who kind of comes across as this little bit spacey girl, apparently in that area, uh, very dominant. Uh, I, I don't think it goes 
beyond the bounds of what you might see in your typical sapphic romance. But uh, I, I guess if you're kind of in the BDSM world, this may be more your your thing than what you might see in your typical sapphic romance. Uh, I really enjoyed this one, mainly because of Harper. After reading this one, you're like, oh, Harper is the main character of the entire series. Uh, there, there's such an interesting storyline to Harper. And there is, in the Harper and Pates, I got to be honest, when I started reading it, and like when I read the first two books, I'm like, I don't know, somebody being with Paisley, I just don't see it. But it works, but Harper's storyline is just awesome. And it's one of those ones where maybe you will, but it's like, oh, I, I, don't, I don't see that. Oh, and you did let me know. Oh, and I didn't catch that. Uh, I, I'm giving this one a five star. Uh, it, it's just an enjoyable book. Uh, this is there are sometimes when I get a Kindle Unlimited book, I will just return them. Uh, there are sometimes where I read it and I was like, I'll see what the price is, and this price wasn't too much. I was like, all right, I'm going to buy that because I will go back and read parts of that. Uh, so I kept that one, yeah, five star. Then we have So Into You. S-E-W in the U by Amity Malcolm. Uh, Imogene and Esme uh, have been friends since like the second grade, I think. And as they grow older, uh, they develop feelings for each other. And then Esme disappears like at, at 17 or 18, 17, I think. And Imogene doesn't see her for like 10 years. And then she's back in town and she's opening a cannabis shop near uh, Imogene's uh, sewing shop and they reconnect and, and that's it it's a very low stakes uh, not a lot of drama uh, I know when I read set the record straight back in December I enjoyed that for that book but I think it's something that you have to be looking for and I wasn't looking for it here so it didn't stick as well both of them as characters are fine but the overall storyline and the side characters just didn't do it for me uh three stars turning back by Katia Rose uh there are th this is a three river series this is the second of three books in the three river series uh, you have three sisters, last name Rivers. Uh, I I started the first one first, but I finished the second one before I finished the first one. So uh, Trish basically feels like the odd one out among the sisters, uh, but the type of person who cracks jokes so that, you know, people will like her, kind of puts that wall up. Uh, she encounters Kennedy, who is the best friend of her sister's girlfriend, and basically almost immediately they are at odds. I didn't necessarily like this because I was like, well, there's no reason to be, there, it, there's being at odds, and then there's deliberately being a dick, and there's at least one instance of somebody just deliberately being a dick. Kennedy she she is a, a is she a lesbian or is she bi? I think she's a lesbian. Trish is straight. Um but they end up being attracted to each other. Uh I, I enjoyed Trish's story throughout most of this, a different way of somebody basically discovering their sexuality. Uh I I enjoyed Kennedy. I just don't think at the end, spoiler, that when they end up together, that that actually works. But uh, I, I did give it a three and a half stars because I think it started out really well. Uh, oh, Find Me Under the Stars, Olivia Lucas, I DNF'd. Wasn't very good. And the, 
the characters actions that they did i just like why are you doing this i don't get it look at me physical book uh allison cochran here we go again uh i have talked before about allison cochran the charm offensive and kiss her once for me uh i gave the charm offensive four and a half stars kiss her once for me I, I gave four and a half stars but i upgraded to five stars i was expecting a lot here uh but uh Logan and Rosemary used to be the best friends, and then when they were teenagers, they broke apart for reasons that we will see in the book. But their old English teacher, because both of them are now teachers at school, basically makes them take him on a road trip. He has cancer. He wants to go to Maine before he dies. So it's, it's a road trip story in several detours it's fine i think i like the two characters individually i like rosemary more i think the i don't think that the author truly grasped logan as a character till maybe well into the novel this this book is really a little disappointing to me I say that for something that I'm giving a four star, but I was really expecting so much more from it. But it's a four star. A uh, lot of humor in here. Uh, what she does is basically takes a, a Hallmark story and, and makes it gay and uh, gives some depth to it. And there is some depth to it. It just doesn't work as well in here for me as it did in those other books. And the last book that I read in this period, told you, I read a lot of books. A lot of these were quick reads. Uh, it's Back to the Start, written by Monica McKellen. Remy goes back to the town where she lived during her senior year, where is also where her first crush, love, Fallon, is. Uh, Fallon was a popular girl who Remy was tutoring, and Remy was a lesbian, but wasn't out, pretty much loved Fallon, and they had a night together, and then she's going back, and she doesn't want anything to do with this town. She especially doesn't want to have anything to do with Fallon. And we find out why in the course of the novel. Monica McCallum books can be tricky sometimes, Sometimes what some of the characters do are like, I don't get it. Now, sometimes it works. The problem I have with this is that what Fallon did and what Remy thought Fallon did were pretty bad. And then that gets moved past pretty quickly. And then it's kind of like people just shitting on Remy and Remy always being responsible for progressing the relationship and that just didn't work for me fallon by herself i don't think came across as a bad character but fallon with remy kind of seems manipulative to me i'm sure that's not what the author meant for it to come across as but that's what it does for me saw a lot of potential in this one but i'm going to give this one three and a half stars and i am going to stop talking now because that is all the books for this period and my throat is getting dry. So um, please like and subscribe, leave a comment, and I'll talk to you next time.